I thought the article is, does anyone have time to be a good friend anymore? I want to share life with people, not just catch up for five minutes when I run into them at the store. <laughs> oh, this is quintessential London, mate. This this was like a London-centric post, but maybe this applies to most metropolitan cities. Does anyone have time to be a good friend anymore? Forget good friend. Does anyone have time to be a friend? Not even a good one, a friend. I don't think so. I always thought I was... Well, I, I probably still am pretty selfish with my time and stuff, but I think most people are nowadays. And I think you see that, I think a representation of that is pubs and bars. Whenever you go to pubs and bars, especially after like work times, you always see like a group of people around the table, you know, talking to their friends. And usually it's like one person like, you know, yapping away while everyone else listens. But it's always like very, everyone's always keenly kind of attentive and aware of what's going on in a group. And if you've ever been out, you know, on the piss or something, and you try to say hi to those type of groups, they usually give you a glow. They usually glare at you, growl at you, like, fuck off. Do you know what I mean? Because it's unsignable because they don't really get to see their friends often. This one random Wednesday, they all bumped into each other and they're all available and they all have money. They all want to have a catch up and drink. The last thing they want is some random to come through and start disrupting them and trying to get into their group and saying, you know, and whatever, just chatting. So I think that possessive clickiness you see in bars, which is also um, reflected in nightclubs. Um, you go to some clubs, whatever, or you go to some club nights and people don't really want to like, you know, say hi or chill out or hang. They kind of would just keep what they're, they're to their friends. I think that as much as that speaks to how negative and dark and macabre and bleak London social life is, I think it's also a reflection on the fact that we don't have that much time with our friends. So when we do go out with them, we want to spend time with our friends. We don't want to spend time with some random who is offering us ket in a bathroom. Do you know what I mean? We want to spend time with our fucking friend we haven't seen in 18 months. So I get it. But I think, you know, good friend is 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 a luxury. Having a friend <laughs> is something that we would love. We would love, we would love, we would love to see. But again, what do I know? Let's read. Let's read this article here. Big up um, Laura Pitcher, courtesy of Dazed. Early this month, after a particularly long week and amid a very unserious battle with a pesky head cold, I turned into a friend. I turned to a friend and asked a question: Do you ever wish you could take two weeks of annual leave for seeing or socializing with anyone? She said she thinks about it often, as usually a social person. My mum had to pry my hands from the playground at the end of each school day. My longing to spend every moment lying vertically home has been relatively new, but increasing in occurrence. I cherish my deeply fulfilling friendships. I strongly believe in the importance of nurturing my relationships, even when I'm tired. Still, I often feel like I have no hours to spare after showing up for all the week's commitments. I realized I wasn't craving space away from my loved ones, but the ability to feel energized enough to relish in their company more time for truly enjoy my friendships to be fair i'm surprised more people don't do this i was doing this often it's kind of changed now with everybody working from home there's not there's not much of a need for it but prior to working from home and prior from the pandemic every because technically i think in the uk you basically get like 30 days of holiday or let's let's say 20 plus 20 plus right let's say let's just call it 20 so you get 20 days of holidays in the uk if you work full time and i think it's calculated to about two and a half days per month or something I would always, not sure about you guys, but when I was working, especially prior to the pandemic, I would always take those two days per month just to take them. Sometimes, obviously, I'll take them to have my, you know, techno weekenders in Berlin and stuff. But most of the time, it was just so you have some time off at the end of the month, whether or not you want, especially if it was end of the month on payday, which is extra bonus. So you could actually go out, have a good time and not worry about having to go work on a Monday. I'd always kind of take the Monday off or, you know, whatever it may be, just to kind of, you know, um, make sure you could have a real crazy one if you wanted to but that was a good you could also take those two days during a week if you need to do some life admin stuff if you work nine to six and you've got no time to go to the bank or to you know return things or whatever maybe you could also do that so i was always surprised when i saw a lack of people taking holiday in the first place especially little small ones around the year just for staycations or just to kind of recharge your batteries um people will always kind of save it up for this one big long trip but i think big long trips can be a bit of a double-edged double-edged sword you wait for ages to take that trip but then when you do go to a trip and you come back you're gonna have the worst holiday blues ever 
especially if you go to like somewhere amazing and exotic like southeast asia or something and you have a great time and you come back to work you're going to be so depressed i'd much rather take like a couple of weeks here and there a little free day a little week here a little this a little that and kind of break it up throughout the year to kind of keep myself energized and charged then save it all up for one time it's even more so if you've got a big social group of friends it's probably important to probably check in on them quite often if need be and keep that social battery charged and to kind of wait until right at the end but you know everyone's different when it comes to these sort of things it continues according to a new study led by natalie sorry natalie pennington of colorado state university my exhausted friend and i are not alone Americans have an average of four or five friends, not four or five friends, but now only spend three, three hours per week with them compared to six hours a decade ago. In other words, the growing loneliness epidemic is not about being, it's not about people having fewer friends. It's more just about a byproduct of having no time to foster deeper connections. I don't think that's true. I think it's probably a mixture of things. If nowadays you've got only four to five friends and in the seventies people had like what? way more right um and we know we spent three hours with our friends nowadays based um, compared to like six hours a decade ago i think that always has to do with social media a decade ago social media wasn't as good or wasn't as addictive as it is now so people nowadays can probably spend more time on that without seeing their friends or if, if need be you can kill two birds with one stone you can stay on social media stay inside and you can also see your friends on social media so it feels like you don't need to catch up with them so you need to kind of go out your way to make more effort to see people irl but you technically are seeing them especially if we're all uploading stuff at the same time no in the same way we're up uploading our stories we're all posting on our feed we're all tweeting all this sort of shit it kind of feels like you know everything while going with your friends i mean nothing crazy has really happened unless you know you want you're not going to find out something super crazy that isn't on the timeline for the most part which is really sad you know how we all live our lives most of the most monumental moments in our lives are definitely going to be on the timeline so i think a lot of people are probably substitute in that IRL experience or just what they're doing on social media which might be the reason why those stats are so low it continues Juliana AS an artist in Toronto says that she manages to see just one of her friends for just one of her five close friends each week one of her, well, sorry she only manages to see one of her five close friends each week I miss stillness and having more time I think back to my childhood I'm an Afro-Caribbean woman with a communal upbringing and what I saw and experienced growing up is so distant from our reality now for Juliana, a young woman working from her way up a career ladder, the main time suck for building and maintaining friendship is work. It not only takes up space in her calendar, but also in her mind when she's off the clock. I think about it so often, how much time I spend worrying and anxious about business day-to-day -day bills. I don't want to go out at night because waking up early gives me more time <laughs> to clear my mind and accomplish my things. In the internal battle between prioritizing productivity and enjoying shared experiences, Juliana feels like we too um, often give into the machine's demand. I think it's tricked us into thinking isolation and hyper-independence are self-preservation. But together is the only way to survive. She says America's rigorous working culture is undoubtedly a play, a play here with people working hundreds of hours more uh, yearly than Europeans according to the 2023 report. But that's a problem though, isn't it? Like, would work, man, like if you do like the bare minimum you could probably get away with probably having more social time with your friends but if you do the bare minimum not sure about you guys but doing the bare minimum your day goes way slower your day goes way your, your day goes way slower you feel like you're wasting your time you don't really learn much you don't really develop and grow as a person in your career or the job that you're doing and if you do want to you know pursue it long term you probably should be trying a little bit more than bare minimum the moment you try to do something more than bare minimum in most workplaces you'll get rewarded because most people are terrible at what they do most of you know i think most of us can agree to that even at your workplace now you probably know three or a few slackers over there so if you do just a, above the bare minimum someone at work will notice you and you would probably get promoted obviously you get promoted you get more kind of you know um responsibilities you get more money but it also is way more time it was going to take away more time and if you're someone you know that kind of enjoys doing a good job if you're a perfectionist woof, it's going to be even worse because you're not going to you know you're going to be sort of like competing against yourself um to try to do the best job possible so that's going to obviously take up a lot of your time so that kind of you know leads you into a bit of a rat race but i also think at some point you know at some stage in life you also have to get to a point where you are okay 
with having a smaller group of friends seeing them for less amount of time but when you do see them it's obviously the best because that's what happens when you have a smaller group of friends when you have a smaller group of friends you don't really need to see them often you might see them once a year but when you do see them it's like you've seen enough no time has passed because you're actually real rap, real rap friends but at some point the older you get you have to start to realize that socially and all that sort of stuff it's not that important you know it really isn't like it, it figures itself out in the end anyway and really it's probably more important to you know make sure that you're making money you're looking after yourself and you can kind of you know indulge yourself in the lifestyles and the you know um, extracurricular stuff that you enjoy to do and you need a job to do that so one thing you know you kind of have to compromise in one shape or way along the way and i think you know the type of like having hyper big social group of friend thing is definitely something that happens when you're super young you have to kind of enjoy it i think also at the time i think it's super beneficial to enjoy that you know that time when you have like a fucking like i remember one time what was that what was my facebook when I, before i delete my facebook i think i had like five thousand friends on there and i can say with hand on heart the, of those 5,000 friends, I've probably seen in real life 3,000 of them. Those are people I met throughout my time at school, uni, working, traveling. But all those people I added on my Facebook are people that I've met, legit majority of them, which is crazy. But that I think is the same for most people that live in the metropolitan city, especially if you're involved in the scene and you're trying to make a name for yourself, you're DJing, going to all these parties, it happens. But just enjoy it. Enjoy that moment because it's not going to happen again in the future. And now, half of those people, I can't remember who they are. And I don't know who they are. I don't, you know, never heard from them again. And life kind of moves on. So um, I think that is just a natural progression of life. I don't think you're meant to have those big social group of friends until the end of time. It's a bit scary if you do, to be completely honest. Um, let's continue. Uh, some TikTok girl. I don't want to watch that. Um, there's always been relatively um, expected. There's Sorry. There's always been a relatively expected decline in face-to-face -face time with friends going from high school to college to workforce still our current relationship with time and socializing goes beyond that according to latterly pennington an assistant professor at communication at colorado state university even young americans currently wish that they had more time for friendships on one hand adults absolutely gain additional obligations that make it harder to spend more time with people she says but on another hand things happening in society are contributing as well this includes a shift in how we communicate with each other pennington's prior research shows that face-to-face -face communication voice calls make people feel connected but texting and video calls are less beneficial and social media and email do not promote connection or decrease loneliness it also suggests that many young people feel like they are lacking valuable social skills after the pandemic yeah you see that a lot man you see a lot of kids nowadays who you think have autism but they're just socially awkward you know <laughs> bare people like that who just spent they've kind of grown up you know their kind of formative years they spent in they spend it on zoom they spend it on teams they spend it on google hangouts they spend it on slack so when you meet them in real life they're like so so weird and you think there's something wrong with them but there's not they just you know they spent too much time behind the computer which is you know whatever it is i'm just surprised here at this last bit of this paragraph where it says painter's research shows that face-to-face -face communication voice calls make people feel more connected but texting and video calls don't so video calls don't make people feel connected people actually pr pr prioritize or prefer voice calls over video hmm because everyone does that now right everyone will you know everyone's got a friend who will send you an unsolicited like i've got a few i'm not going to name them because i don't want them to feel bad but i've got a few people on my instagram and on my whatsapp who send unsolicited voice notes and they're usually over a minute long and it's like fucking hell i have to sit here and listen to this like a minute like i have to remember what that and then you you then it almost feels like you have to reply back with a voice note you can't just text and if you do text you look like a weirdo um or you've got people who will voice or video chat you unsolicited too without, without any encouragement you just sit in there suddenly you've got this facetime you know you're and the FaceTime thing is always annoying because when it call, when someone calls you via FaceTime, the fucking selfie camera turns on. So I'm like, what the fuck's going on? What's this, what's this intrusion? What's this spying going on? This attempted at hacking. Um, but I'm interested to see that those things don't replicate voice calls. Interesting. Um, I remember there was a time for a very short period. This must have been like, this might have been like 2019, 2020. Maybe it was around there. Was it 2020? I had a New Year's Eve. I had a New Year's resolution, which I dumped straight away where I was going to commit myself to calling my friends more on the phone, like randomly. <laughs> and then I remember after a couple of phone calls, I was like, you know what? This is kind of weird. If some random person who I, you know, I'm friends with, but I hadn't seen in a while, decided to randomly call me 
just to check up i'd think they were calling for money or something you know what i mean or whatever <laughs> i wouldn't get a good feeling about it and the people that I did call bless them you know they, they kind of you know were polite but i think they got the same feeling too they thought i was gonna i don't know dump a kid on them or something or ask them to be a ask them to be a guarantor in a house <laughs> or to give me a good fucking word at court or something nah like that random calling people this it it, it sounds good on paper but in reality people hate that sort of shit it continues where previous generations have emphasized the importance of married relationships many young americans now consider friends the most important relationship in their lives in fact 61 percent of u.s adults say having close friends is extremely important to live a fulfilling life according to the 2023 pew research survey which says um, which is far higher than those who say the same about being married 23 percent as a result we also may be experiencing or expecting an increased level of depth and commitment from our friendship we watch all these tv shows about perfect friend groups and it's easy to think that you're supposed to have that exactly good point when the reality is that friendship expectations vary from person to person emily flores um, founder of cripple media said that she often struggled to keep up with the expected amount of communication between friends i wish we could live in a world where we would could stop where we could start where we could start from less neurotypical styles of communication and allow fluidity into our relationships. It's a lot harder for me to reach out. So sometimes sending TikToks to my friends is low energy way to keep in touch. But that also, hmm, that's a cop out, isn't it? That's interesting. I've never heard of that. Less neurotypical styles of communication. These new buzzwords, boy. Less new, you mean you're too pussy to pick up a phone or text somebody or call somebody. Um, i don't know i think if you're if you if you want to be friends with somebody there has to be some skin you have to put some skin in the game you have to have some skin in the game you have to invest some sweat equity and you can't just be like oh it's fine to just like double heart to double tap their messages on instagram stories or to fucking send them some emojis and shit nah man you have to pick up the phone you have to text somebody you have to meet someone have drinks meet up hang out that's part of it like it's, it, it should be a bit of a ball like to be somebody's friend that's you know it's like being in a relationship parts of it is going to be a ball leg but you love the person so the love kind of you know supersedes the ball leg but nowadays everybody wants everything to be comfortable and to be right you know right within their comfort zone and to not kind of require any level of effort or no amount of physical exertion it should just you know it, sh it should kind of cater to their needs um which is obviously the opposite of friendship i think it's like because I, I always think of like good friends as like Imagine your friend wanting to go to central London to go buy a pair of jeans, but they weren't sure which ones they wanted. But they also wanted to just hang out and not be alone. That's that's what a good friend is. You just go with them. Even though you don't want to go, you hate central London, you hate shopping, you hate people, but you go with your friend just to keep them company. That's what a friend's about. And even if they don't buy anything and they waste their time, you know, in Uniqlo for 17 hours, that's part of the sort of experience. But I think a lot of people won't do that. A lot of people are going to ask you, where are you going? How long are you going to be there? Do you know what I mean? So people don't compromise anymore people don't um people don't uh put put that to the side anymore which is which is which is sad but hey what can you do it continues the many formal and corporate adjacent ways people try to fit friends into their ever packed work schedule clearly aren't cutting it like zoom calls adding um adding your brunch with your girls on the google calendar or even co-working paul paula massina a 22 year old from los angeles says that she feels like she only sees her friends when they're working alongside each other laptops lined up across the table yo that's depressing it all has um it's all we have time to do but we still want to have each other's company it's unfortunate our lives have revolved around that miss uh messina says that she alternates she'll alternate through phases of socializing and entering hermit mode once she feels burned out from trying to achieve a work-life balance we're living in an era of convenience and sometimes making friends can feel inconvenient <sighs> the luxury and we young americans don't want to bother even if we know that it's ultimately worth it there's no skirting around the fact that most social activities can cost at least the amount of a train fare or an uber fare there's no small obstacle for the more than 60 percent of americans living paycheck to paycheck that might be kind of true 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 there might be a bit where like because we're all making less money than we did a few years ago or because most of us no let's not say that because most of us our money isn't going as far as it used to 
the ability to just like go out on a whim isn't as on the front of your mind because nowadays it costs more like let's say two years ago or three years ago it cost like 20 quid to go out now it's probably 50 or maybe close to 100 which definitely changes things right because 100 quid to meet your friend to kind of some after work drinks might sound a little bit excessive when you might be able to achieve the same thing by just talking to each other on facetime with some beers from the shop on the table you know um but that also isn't helping us feel uh fulfilled or alive or nourished and shit so um yeah i think people have to just compromise i think that's what it is people just have to be grown up about it and compromise and realize that hey you might be a bit more broke um you might be a bit more tired you might be a bit more exhausted mentally physically but having the you know making an effort to see your friends in real life as much as possible is obviously the key to most of these things because very rarely do you go see your friends and you don't you regret going out you might go you might regret going out somewhere but I don't think many people go out and see their friends and like, oh, I wish I'd never saw this person. It doesn't happen. So, mo you know, it's always a good experience. So just go and see them anyway. Well, what do I know? I don't have any. It continues. On the other end of the time poor experience of modern friendship. Um, oh, sorry. Big up Chris Mack in the stream chat as well. Big up Chris Mack. A neurotypical is a modern hippy dippy term for a regular person. Neurodivergent people are the ones on autism spectrum or with anxiety disorder or the ones who think they're fish. Ah, oh, okay, 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 okay. Big up, big up. <laughs> the ones who think they're fish is hilarious. Big up Chris Mack. Okay, cool. I never heard of that, man. Neuro, what, what, what is this phrase they said here in the, in the, in the link, in the, in the sentence? Um, da, 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 da. It was like neurotypical. I was like, neurotypical? What the fuck is neuro? Yeah, there it goes. We, we could start from less neurotypical styles of communication fucking yeah neurotypical you know bloody hell i'm a neurotypical type of listener um anyway um on the other end of this of the time poor experience of the modern friendships are those who feel like they have time for socializing but can't lock anyone into solidified solidified plans sarah crawford a 30 year old in atlanta says she had an overwhelming sense that none of her close friends have time for her lately i can't get them to respond in group chats <laughs> have meaningful conversations or hang out as much as i'd like it feels like fr it feels frustrating and i have so many moments asking myself do i expect too much are we as close as i thought after working um to prioritize more intentional living and in-person hangouts in her own life crawford feels like she's watching her friends get stuck in the hamster wheel at this time at this point sorry i'm just hopeful that we will still be able to keep in touch and pick up the friendship again when their lives calm down more even if it's years from now yo that's probably something a lot of people around the world feel right like you can't look anyone down you sort of feel like is it me did i say something wrong am i being too pushy blah blah blah, blah. but i think most we're just all afraid of getting locked into something that we don't want to do <laughs> nowadays people will basically blank you or or reply to you very slowly over the period of like you know 24 hours because they don't want you to feel like they're hyped so that you can lock them in for a plan that's what people are avoiding basically they're, they're avoiding getting locked into plans so you're getting replies you know you're having a conversation with somebody and you're talking over the span of like 16 hours and you're getting a message every four hours <laughs> you get a reply back to what you say you reply back instantly but then they take four hours you reply back instantly they take four hours just because they don't want to they don't want you to say hey we should hang out you know and then <laughs> and then they kind of feel obliged to hang out and then they regret it because they want to do their own thing or they don't want to spend any money so that's where we are at the moment so i think nowadays you just have to you just have to be willing to be you just have to be you have to be willing and you have to be aware that you're going to feel a little bit uncomfortable and you're going to feel a little bit ridiculous trying to make plans with people you're going to feel like you're putting you know you're basically you know spreading your cheeks open you're going to feel like people are spitting in your face and shit but you have to make that effort because i think some of us myself included you just need a bit of encouragement you need someone to kind of push you and if somebody is a bit pushy and is trying to see you and trying to hang out more than likely you're going to buckle and when you do buckle and give it and go you'll be happy that you did but you'll never make the effort yourself so you kind of need something in there for, for you it's unfair it's not you know it really is unfair that you have to do that i understand but that's the way it is either you stay at home and you just you know stay by yourself or you make the effort you have to decide but the effort maker is going to feel it you're going to feel very uncomfortable you're going to feel very exposed um you're going to feel like you are chasing people around and no one likes that but whew, 
in the end it's going to be good but i can imagine how brutal it is when you're in a group chat and you're like i'm trying to make plans with your friends you see everybody's you've seen that everybody's received your message they've all read it no one's replying <sighs> to be fair part of the reason why i kind of like went through the whole why i'm so like anti-friend was because of that to be fair it's probably me trying to um mitigate for like heartbreak because i i take things personally all the time i can't help it so if somebody turns me down or decides not to want to hang out with me and says no or doesn't want to be my friend i'm gonna take that personally and i might you know i might go fucking dark you know what i mean and which is not not cool but you know it's just the way that i'm made so my decision to be like hey i'm gonna be friendless was more to sort of protect my peace protect my mental <laughs> but i can't imagine how it is for the opposite person who's trying to make you know their friends come out trying to kick them outside trying to you know pull them to hang out outside kicking and streaming it must be fucking exhausting it really does i have so much sympathy and empathy for you um but i think the only way to kind of make that thing work is to just keep pulling at your friends and hope they kind of come around that's the only way to make it work because people like myself need a lot of encouragement which is really sad and really bleak but hey um let's continue most americans seem to have least believe that they want the same thing when it comes to friendships more depth more time the tension then lies in the fact that more people or some people feel like they absolutely can't and to crave the same the same spare hours others believe we should all do our best to push back against the machine the quote i understand when friends just need a day to not exist because capitalism is sucking their soul but i'm also struggling and working hard with the extra hours clocked in and trying to pay bills and make time for friends says ray 80 year old designer from michigan who says they consider friends chosen family after being disowned by their family for being queer <laughs> ray currently only has two close friends who they see once or twice a month so they're actively looking for new connections or dating apps at work and at local game nights oh my god still the number one issue they face is that no one wants to make solid plans to leave their house <laughs> coming out queer nowadays must be fucking long in it because i can't imagine a more flaky a more inconsistent a more unreliable group of people than queer people i couldn't imagine because everybody's got a new everyone's looking for a new cooler group to hang out with i bet you in the in that queer community it must be flake a heaven. It must be flake a clock, flake twenty four hours, flake a day, flake a minute. Everybody's flaking. Everybody's looking for a new plan. Everybody's looking for a cooler group, a new fucking motive. It must be so hard in the queer. I bet the queer community is like most kind of niche core communities where like once you find your group and your circle, you lock them down. It's cool, but when you're trying to find them, oh, it can be brutal to lock people down because everyone's like finding themselves they've all come out they've all kind of maybe you know understood and tapped into their sexuality and how they see themselves recently they're exploring things they're traveling they're doing this they're doing that they're jumping around from job to job they're going to study they're interning so they're just you know their heads in the clouds constantly so to get them to lock them down is just like oh god it must be so hard so i have sympathy a lot for this person really really fucking do but as per usual they're doing the right things going out being social dating apps work whatever because i'd imagine some dating apps even if you don't end up hooking up with some people maybe it does turn into friendships you know like you could be lucky where you might meet some someone there with a group of friends it doesn't work out you know relationship wise or sexually but you end up still hanging out or you end up maybe befriending other people within their friendship group and then hey here you are part of their kind of inner circle so i think that's really important people don't put themselves out there enough um because it's hard and it's awkward and it's uncomfortable and it can sometimes be embarrassing but i think that's the only way to kind of get over it especially if you're in a workplace where maybe the people they don't like too much or they're not really your type of people like going out particular going out to specific things that you're into i think it's a way to go like going to art gallery exhibitions if you're into that sort of stuff book, book clubs going to you know just grocery shopping more often and having a smile on your face actually doing the things that you enjoy and then finding people that you like that that you know along that along that way that you might like is probably the way to go um but again it's going to be brutal it's not going to be comfortable it's going to be fucking brutal but in the end it will play out um last paragraph here for ray having time for quality friends um friendship sorry means enjoying the little things organizing a game night going on a walk together grabbing a drink with somebody going into a shoe store um or going to a store you've never been into or even sharing a meal the quote 
I am literally so tired of every meal that I have being alone. I want to share life with people, not just catch up for five minutes when I run into them at the store. But many of us, myself included, have become all too accustomed to swiftly replying to our bosses, but leaving our loved ones waiting for days and weeks or months on the basis that they'll understand. After all, they're the exact same boat. We swear we'll do the game night or the proper catch up once the deadlines wane, but what they never do and convenience us and, conv and convince ourselves, sorry, that next month will somehow be different. After we rest and recover alone, we'll finally have the time to be a friend. Bleak, but true. <laughs> Bleak, but true. We always like to put our plans off. You know, I'll, I'll catch up with this person later. I'll fix this later. And I think, you know, one of the, one of the kind of glaring things for me, again, not to make this extra dark, but one of the things I remember I thought about when my friend um, un unfortunately passed away, Joshua Sweeney, RIP to him, was that I think in the back of my mind, even because we hadn't spoken and we were kind of on bad terms before he passed, which kind of made me feel a bit weird posting a tribute to him in the purpose anyway. But I did think in my back of my head for the longest time, oh, we'll bump into each other along, along the way and we'll be able to kind of, you know, um, uh, mend things and patch things up. And that time never comes. And then out of the blue, boom, you find out this person has a terminal illness and bang, they're dead within a week. Do you know what I mean? And then that chance of you to reconcile is completely gone. And this person was like a proper friend of mine, like a proper old school childhood friend I've known since I was like 17, 18. And, you know, you know, along the way, something happened. We kind of, you know, fell out. I can't remember why. I, it's even more hurtful because I can't even remember why we fell out. I swear to God, I can't. And um, we haven't spoken to each for years, but I know the love was still there, I think. Anyway, and yeah, man, it, you know, time just went by and then, you know, there wasn't any more time to kind of fix things. So, you know, maybe the owner should always be on now, not on manana. You know, it should always be now. Like, try to meet your friends up now, but it's easier said than done. But I think this line here about, this is unfair because this line here i think is unfair but many of us myself included have become all too accustomed to swiftly replying to our bosses but leaving our friends and loved ones waiting for days come on bro you know why you reply to bosses right away they fucking pay you i mean they fucking pay you they pay your salary <laughs> they make you afford fucking your lunches and your dinners and your sheen and timu orders like that's why you reply to your bosses and people that work swiftly and that's why your friends get you know left on scene or get left on unread Come on, we know, we know what go on. We know what go on. If if your friends paid you money, you'd probably, you know, reply to the messages a lot quicker. But friends probably suck money out of you, as opposed to actually give you money. But yeah, big up, uh, big up this, big up this person for writing this article. Much appreciated. Big up Laura Pitcher. Big up Days. I'll put the article link in the description for you to check out yourself if you need be. Let me actually, I'll actually put it in the chat now if you want to see it yourself. But big up Laura Pitcher, big up Days, absolutely brilliant article. The title is called, Does Anyone Have Time to Be a Good Friend Anyone? No, does, ha, does Anyone Have Time to Be a Good Friend Anymore? It's available now on Days and the, the link will be obviously in the description and the link will be available for those of you who want to check it out, of course, later on as well. So big up everybody for tuning in. I'll put it in the chat now for you guys to see if need be.